How can I differentiate between grace and law? Now, grace is all the work of God to bless us. Law is also from God, it's, but it's a requirement. It's a commandment. The law also includes punishment and discipline. So grace is what God does for us to give us salvation, to give us uh, eternal life, to give us help, give us strength, give us reward, all these the blessings. That's grace. The law is what God demands on, uh, from us, what God wants us to do. Now, I, I don't deny that. I agree that. So I have both the gospel, the grace, and the law. We have Jesus Christ dying on the cross for us. That's grace. That's the gospel, and then also grace will include all the blessings of God. The gospel is Jesus dying on the cross to give us eternal life. That is the gospel. And grace will include the gospel and also include all the blessings of God. And the law is what God requires of us, that we are to obey. So we, uh, we're supposed to obey, but the point is, don't be motivated to obey by the law. It's like some people say, you have to, have to, have to. Uh, or because from childhood, always say, you have to, to be good, you have to obey. If not, I'll punish you. So it's always the law. When we are in Jesus, we should be you know, uh, motivated by the grace of God. He is so good, therefore I, I'm motivated to love God, to obey God. Love God and obey God, that is the law. Whatever we do to follow God is the law. We should obey the law, to love God, obey God, to preach the gospel, to trust in God, to bear fruit. All this is the law. The law is what we do. Grace is what God does for us. The law is also, now the law has two parts. The law is, the law is what God gave us, the commandments, and also the warning and the punishment that it will tell us. Whoever don't obey the law and don't have the forgiveness, you'll be punished. And then we are also uh, required to obey the law, to love God, to love people, to uh, obey God and to pray and to preach the gospel, uh, to have the fruit of the Holy Spirit. All these are our action. Now, the fruit of the Holy Spirit is at the same time God's action, God changing us so that we bear fruit. But we do, we do respond to God and we, we do have love for people. We do build up the peace from God. We have a relationship with God so that we can have peace. And we need to learn to be patient and to be kind to people. So to be kind, we have to be kind. It's not the Holy Spirit uh, 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 doing, doing the kindness work for us. The Holy Spirit gives us kindness, but we have to learn to be kind to people, to be nice to people. Okay, second, in all my life have been taught law and have been struggling to obey by all means through, uh, though failing every time. Now, how will start balancing law and God's and grace or I choose grace only? Okay, now, we follow both the grace and the law. Okay, the grace is the source of power and forgiveness. The law is what we're supposed to obey. Without the grace, without the gospel, nobody can be saved. Salvation is by grace, through faith, it's Jesus' gift to us. The gospel is Jesus' gift. So, we always receive grace, not just when we believe in Jesus. It's every day. Even when we are serving God, we need grace. We need the power of God. We need the motivation from God. We need the uh, appreciate from God, appreciation from God, and the uh, the strength of God and the reward from God. His reward is not just in the future; it's also present day that we'll receive it hundredfold today. That we'll receive uh, strength and joy and love. All this. So we need grace in order to be able to obey God. If people just obey God out of you know ab obligation, then it's just always obligation, always just the law. So we need the grace of God to tell us that. You know, so you read the Bible. It says that when we love God, then God will prepare for us things eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. So the Bible says that. So we accept what the Bible says. And the Bible says that 
when we seek His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to us. So there is grace there. But there is a part we do. The part is we love God, and we seek the righteousness of God, and we um, uh, seek His uh, righteousness and His kingdom. Uh, seeking His righteousness means seeking His holiness. And also, the Bible says when we delight in God, He will... Uh, he will give us the desires of our heart. So we do delight in God. That's what we do. We count all the blessings of God, then we delight in God. So delighting in God is the law. It's obeying, obedience. Whatever we obey to do, we love God, we honor God, we worship God, we, we love Him, uh, we preach the gospel. All this is the law, the requirement to do, what we are required to do. But many people just have you know, just think of, I have to do this, I have to do that. We should be motivated by the grace of God. Everything we do, the Bible does have promise. The Bible promises that we have reward. The Bible promises that God will change, change our life, transform our life so that we have strength to obey. And God will pay attention to what we do and He will reward us. And He will give us the necessary resource. All these things will be added to you. And also, when God did not spare His only Son to give to us, how will He not also give us all things together with Him? So He has these promises that He will give us all things, so that is grace, so that we have the ability to have the strength to obey God. So that is um, that the, the strength and the motivation has to come from grace. If the strength is just from the law, then it's just then we are just slaves. We are just servants. We are just servants. I have to obey, I have to obey, I have to obey. Now, it's not like this. Now, even though Paul said that I'm a slave of God, but he was serving God joyfully. He said, rejoice in the Lord. So I'm a slave because I dedicate myself to God. I'm willing to offer my body as a living sacrifice. I do it willfully. But I'm not like a slave who is suffering. I'm a free slave. i have I give myself to God, I f uh, serve God freely. When people have the grace of God to serve God, then they are more joyful. They have strength. They have motivation. They have spiritual gifts. And the, the spiritual gifts will flow out. The fruits of the Holy Spirit will flow out. And it will influence people to believe in Jesus. Okay? So if you still have questions, you can ask me more. So if you have been living under the law only just telling you what to do, then you start to read all these passages and find that there's always grace there. Now sometimes it's not directly in a passage, but in the whole Bible you can find many Bible verses of God's grace. So you can see God is doing all these wonderful things for us. And so we believe in that. When we are doing anything good, even give a cup of cold water, He will, will by no means lose the reward. That means God is very happy with us and He will reward us. He'll remember what we do. So we always motivate us with this grace then we'll be serving God joyfully and not under pressure. Three, as a preacher, I grew under law, teachings, and that is what I have, uh, what I heard, let's see, and that's what I have fed my people always. Now they have heard on how to balance grace and law, what do I do? So what do we do is, in all our messages, we always, first we understand grace. So you need to read the Bible over and over again. Especially first the New Testament. Now even in the Old Testament, there's a lot of grace there. So in the New Testament, you read over and over again and pay attention to, to the promises. For instance, the beatitude, blessed is, blessed, blessed. It's always saying blessed. So whenever we obey Him, there's, we are blessed. So we're full of the blessings of God. So when we talk, we always talk about the blessing of God, the promises of God, that He is with us. It's Him who changes us so that we'll obey Him. It's Him who gives us the wisdom how to preach, give us the motivation how to preach. So we need to learn that. We need to learn that. And I have uh, now PDFs. Now, if you have a cell phone, you can download this 
PDFs I can, you know, I can send it uh, to uh, Jeremiah, Pastor Jeremiah, and also other people. Now, if you have a cell phone, you can ask him to add you. Uh, I can allow him to add you to the group, and then I will send the PDFs I have, and then you can read them, and then you can learn how to preach with grace so that people would hear about God's grace to motivate them to obey. We need both. Don't say we just have the grace of God. Because the Bible does tell us that we should obey. And then the Bible says that not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father in heaven. So we do need to obey. And, and the Bible says that he who does not abide in him, it will be like a branch wither and is thrown in the fire. So the Bible does tell us it's necessary to have a good relationship with God, to repent of our sins and to obey Him and serve Him. The Bible does say that. So if a person doesn't serve God, then he's cast into the outer darkness and he will be gnashing his teeth and he will be thrown into the fire prepared for the devil and his angels. So we do obey the law after we have the grace, but we enjoy every day. And whenever we tell ourselves to do anything, we motivate ourselves with grace. So every day I would was, I was say, I declare this. I'm serving God and God is very happy. God is pleased with me even though I'm not perfect. But I try my best to serve God and God is very, very happy. So we can tell people this. When we serve God, God is very happy. When we love God, God is very, very happy. Okay, number four, how can I cultivate my love life since have been hurt by people many times still have developed hatred and pain what can i do to recover now this is a big topic uh this question i'll uh, i'll uh, talk about tomorrow how can we build up uh have love uh, healing this is a big topic now this basically first we can Believe that God heals the broken hearted. When we love God, when we praise God, His love will come to us and heal us. And then also, um, we don't have to be afraid. The Lord is for us. Who can be against us? And so I don't have to be afraid. That's Psalm one, one, 118 verse 6. <clears throat> the Lord is for us. So I'm not afraid. What can uh, people do to me? So they cannot do anything to hurt me. I believe that they cannot do anything to hurt me. So even though they have hurt me, I can put that down. I, have, I can neglect what they've done to hurt me. I can put it down. I can enjoy God's love. So I can, um, you know, I can say to myself, okay, God gives me a new beginning. I can have joy again. I can put down all the hurts. I can rejoice in the Lord because God will give me back everything. When I seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added to me. And if I love God, God will give me things I never imagined so He can restore my life. So I can let go and say, it doesn't matter. Those people cannot steal from me. But if I continue to be hurt by those people, then I will continue to be hurt. Then I will continue to lose more things. But if I trust in God's goodness, then I will... These good things, when I believe that God will give me good things, then I can continue to have good things from God. That I can put down all the pain and suffering. I can say it doesn't matter. They cannot steal from me. Okay, and then how can we deal with each other as couples if one loves yelling all the time? Now, this will be about marriage. Now, I, know, I don't know if question number four... Uh, it's also about marriage. So I will talk about that tomorrow. How to build up a uh, love life if the couple, if the spouse is yelling all the time. Now we have to also think about ourselves. Have we done anything that caused the, the spouse to yell at us? Have we listened to her if it's a wife? Have you listened to her? Have you loved her as Christ loved the church? If we don't love her, we don't love our wives, then uh, they feel lonely and then they will be unhappy. And when they are unhappy, they will yell at us. So when we 
examine ourselves and find that we're not doing well in our marriage, we have not loved our spouse, we need to repent and we say to the spouse, I want to build, rebuild this marriage. Uh, will you work together with me? I want to learn to be better to you and please tell me what I can do. And we need to pay the price to build a marriage. You know, some people think I'll just pay the price to build my church. But we need to pay the price to build up the family also. It's like, you know, Jesus said, love the wife as Christ loves the, uh, the church. So Christ paid the price of dying on the cross for us. So we need to pay the price to spend time with the wife and children and love them and care for them and listen to them, be kind to them, and then try to change them. Now, what if the wife is very unreasonable? Now, part of it we can change if we change ourselves. But he's very, she's very unreasonable. Then it's something I will talk about. This is more complicated. Um, but at least if we are kind to her, then at least it will improve. Okay.